I think a lot of people kind of jump to intentional cover up, and that could very well be true. But the reason why I pulled in the Luis Elizondo story that I wrote in 2021 is what I've discovered since then. And that is a massive problem with record retention schedules not being followed. And although that is getting into a very dry story, I mean, I fully admit that, that not everybody really cares about the nitty gritty details when it comes to that. The bottom line is what matters. And that is the fact that these records are being destroyed way ahead of schedule. And that's a problem, that these records are being met with absolute disregard for their historical significance, but on top of that, absolute disregard for what they need to be doing, and that is preserving these records. And this is an issue. See, I started using the Freedom of Information Act thinking that the government just saved everything and that that you can just request and... If it was there, then if it didn't fit into the nine exemptions, then boom, you got it, right? Or it was heavily redacted or whatever. That was being young and naive and stupid on my part, because then you realize, no, the government actually destroys a lot. And that's part of the game. And part of the game is the Freedom of Information Act, I do not believe, is broken. There's a lot of people who trash it. Look, I got more than 3.2, 3.3 million examples on why the FOIA is not broken. You can get some amazing things, but it definitely needs help. And in one of the reasons it needs help, and one of the ways it needs help, it is the amount of time that it takes to process requests. I've posted some in the last uh, couple of months, a couple of them that almost hit a decade. That's a huge, huge problem. Some that take years to, 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 uh, come our way. That is a huge, huge deal. It's not just because U S citizens shouldn't have to wait that long because we shouldn't, I mean, we're, we're doing stories, we're doing research, whatever. We're, we're just curious. It doesn't matter. The freedom of information act is at our disposal for a reason. But when we get years of a wait, that is incredibly problematic. And I think that this is an issue that needs to be dealt with because now when you when you add into the frustration of these delays, you add in the records retention schedules, the records retention schedules will destroy documents in a quicker amount of time than it takes some agencies to process a request. And what that means is, is it doesn't even matter if your request goes in prior to document destruction, if they don't process it. They may not know to go to James Lekatsky's email box that's archived uh, in, in whatever way that they archive and say, hey, we, we have a pending FOIA here. We have to go ahead and, and save that material for longer. No, none of that takes place. So if they prolong the processing of these requests, whether it be maliciously, intentionally, or just it's the nature of the beast because they're understaffed, doesn't really matter. The end result is that it takes longer to process. That means all these records are destroyed. Now, we've talked about seven years here a couple of times, but there are records that are destroyed literally within 30 to 45 days. All you UFO fans out there will really kind of cringe on this one. But when it comes to the FAA records and a lot of tower logs and and uh, the control tower recordings, well, pilots are encountering UFOs and UAP. That's undeniable. I have a pile of FOIA requests that prove that. But the only way I was able to prove that was that people gave me a tip and they said there was an encounter over Dallas on this date uh, that happened two weeks ago. So go after records on it. And sure enough, recordings would come up. Tower logs would note it. These incidents were being archived. But if it's after the 30 or 45 day period, the FAA destroys the air traffic control recordings and they destroy records because they don't keep them forever. Now, that's a problem. Now, I'm only talking about one specific UFO-related reason, and that's really interesting to me. may not be to the whole world, but what else is being lost on those shorter retention schedules? Some are only three years. Well, three years isn't a long wait when you talk about FOIA. So yet again, you are talking about a lot of material that's just being lost. A lot of these programs and stuff take years to come out into the open. But if those those records, the emails that went in to creating these programs, because a lot of times those emails and the banter back and forth, 
That's more interesting than what happened during the program itself and the final reports and the quarterly summary reports and so on. The behind the scenes is a lot more interesting. But by the time that stuff is public, it's all gone. It's all destroyed. That's not true across the board, but it's true in enough cases that we need action. We need to do something about it because we are losing valuable, important history. And it doesn't matter what the topic is because all topics apply. Records retention schedules, it doesn't matter if it's a UFO or UAP report or recording or something about aircraft or something about whatever. It doesn't stipulate that. The records as a whole are either kept or destroyed. And that's it. And that needs to change.